How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm a little uh, hoarse today. I had a wedding last night. You know, these, these parties, they take a little longer to recover from. Every year you get a little older. Normally, I would have been a million bucks by now, 24 hours later. I'm feeling it today. But we have a whole lot to talk about. Obviously, the AEW deal is still a huge story here. Some recent developments, some big stories coming out. Uh, we're going to break this down. Possibly as soon as this week, we might get an announcement. Most likely by the fifth anniversary show, we'll get something. SmackDown and the cinematic presentation continues. This was an interesting show. They had two very over-the-top, uh, highly produced vignettes. One was with Cody and Roman. The other one was Chelsea Green. We're going to talk about that. Collision last night. That 80-person uh, main event match. <laughs> I want to talk about that. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And also a preview to Grand Slam. Will Danielson and Nigel have their match in New York? That's, that's the big question here, right? That was the big payoff. That's the big ending of that show last night. Nigel was out there. He was talking smack. And Danielson did not come up. He did not show up. He did, wasn't there. Uh, but it looks like Arthur Ashe Stadium, we're going to get him. And everything else happening, I want to talk about. I want to take some time and talk about the current state of wrestling and where we're headed next year. Because, you know, WWE is entering their busy season post-Rumble. And then we just restart everything again. Interesting stuff. Very interesting time in the world of professional wrestling. When we come back, we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's start with some news. It might be new, to, it might be new news to some of you. It may not be. This has been something that we've been talking about for weeks now. Speaking with Busted Open Radio this week, Tony Khan. Tony Khan was in New York, actually, on uh, Friday, I believe. He was at WFAN here in New York, or so I was told. Speaking of Busted Open Radio this week, Tony Khan reiterated with 100% certainty that AEW, TBS, and TNT are here to stay for a long time. Some interesting notes here. He did, he did say he did not leak any numbers to Puck News. John Orand this week put a story out that the two sides had agreed to a three-year deal with a, with a fourth-year option in the range of $170 million annually. It's in the range. I don't, again, I'm going to say this before anybody takes a quote. I've never reported a number. I've never heard a number right i've heard the same numbers everybody else has heard i've heard anywhere from 120 million 140 million 160 170 180 we've all heard the same thing i have no idea and and the reality is most people do not have a number here right tony knows the number and maybe one or two other people on the aw side may know the number right now but it is not something that is public uh it's not even within chatter which i mean listen you know, you sign a contract, people are held responsible not to leak stuff. Uh, and that's one of those things that people do not feel comfortable leaking. He says AEW will air on TNT, TBS. Uh, this is, this is uh, Puck, by the way. This is John Oren. He, he reported that AEW will air on TNT and TBS and True TV twice per week. Um, you know, that, that's interesting because I, that is a new development, if I were to say anything. Uh, I've I have not spoken to anybody that that said True TV was airing AW content. Now maybe this is a new development because WBD was interested in keeping Rampage or um, you know whatever that other show is Shockwave, and maybe they'll move it to True TV because True is changing part of their strategy to become more sports based. So prime time is going to be sports based from eight to eleven. Yeah, I mean, not that, and you keep everything under one umbrella, but he also did note that AEW is pitching an additional package to broadcast networks. 
And this falls in line with a report from a couple of weeks ago that we put out here that AW Fox was interested. There was some interest between the two brands uh, because of inventory in advertising. You know, Fox traditionally doesn't replace, you know, when they got rid of UFC, they didn't go immediately and replace it with another thing. That's not, that's not how they think, but you know, you had, you had success selling ads. Unfortunately, you couldn't sell it at the price to make good on that deal because you were overpaying for WWE content. But AW would be much less expensive and the ad rate would be much less expensive. So you're going to be able to retain your advertisers. Very interesting. I, that That is the true TV thing, though. I, I would say that's the first time I heard it. Uh, John, that's the first report I've heard anybody bring up true TV. Uh, and nobody I've spoken to knows anything, you know, that has not mentioned, not saying that, you know, John, he's a legitimate guy, but that's interesting to me. Also, Max, uh, this was my report yesterday on Mapman. I mean, I've, I've said it for weeks, but got picked up. AW will be on Max in January for pay-per-views. Could be sooner, but I doubt it but it looks like they're going to be on Max, that it will be their home. Not exclusive, though. They'll still have pay-per-views on other providers. Um, I don't know if that is international. You know, I don't know the international landscape. I've been asked a ton about this. I've, I haven't asked. I don't know. But very interesting stuff. I mean, we're here. With this exhausting conversation, we were finally where we were supposed to be a year ago. But the deal is done, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see what they do. WWE Saturday Night's main event returns this December. Will air on NBC and Peacock, simulcasted. It's going to air December 14th, live from the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York. I'll be there. The advertising is a lot of throwbacks. Right, MG? They're really pushing the old school Saturday Night's, uh, Saturday Night's main event feel. I had I had a uh, high school flashbacks for sure. <laughs> Just Hogan holding on to that blue steel cage. That one hit wonder song that I forget the name of the band that did it, but the obsession song. Oh, the yeah. uh, the theme song to Saturday Night's Main Event. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad they brought it back. That's what did it for me. I goes, oh, this feels very. 1980s. I, I, you know, I suddenly I I remember the uh, the Macho uh, Hogan. That's the uh, the superpowers. Uh, the mega powers implode. Mega powers, yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's where it happened, Don. And it's it, the minute I heard that song, that flashback came right. It all came right back to me. You know, you you so have I thought to, that was when you cool. think of that show, right? You have to think of how wrestling changed in that time period. You know, mm -hmm. wrestling was the smoky arena. To you know big bellied guys or or you know it was it was not as refined as it was presented on NBC i mean production well, value and love storylines that wasn't something that people had normally seen on primetime television and yeah. had to be wacky you know you flip in, in a ways. channel these giant these giant human beings of, of you know cartoons come to life beating each other up on primetime television I, that that was a very unique thing and it was successful it was very successful yeah in many ways it's the uh precursor to monday night raw it's kind of where yeah. they they got the idea to start kind of doing it that way and you're right it it went from uh smoky arena to uh studio production yeah very uh i'm, I'm curious about the show i'm, I'm definitely going because it's here in long island uh and it's very close to me and that's a nice building they they renovated that nassau coliseum it's beautiful Really nice. That's where also, uh, World's End was. Also, it looks like they're going to beat. Um, they're going to beat uh, AEW to doing the simulcast thing because it's going to be on Peacock as well. Yeah. So that's that's something I I forgot to bring up. Part of that AEW thing on Max, which is fascinating, is that I I've from for months I've been told Tony really wanted to simulcast this, and I believe it's happening now. AEW programming will be simulcasted on Max, which it should. That's the that you well, know linear linear is passing, and every yeah. yeah everybody's doing that now. Mm -hmm. uh, some more news here before we go to a break. SmackDown potentially moving to three hours in January. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, man. You know, that's... SmackDown this week, which we're going to run down in the next segment, was... I, I liked it a lot, but if that show was any longer, it would start falling apart. I'm not a fan of a three-hour wrestling show. I understand why they do it. There's advertising revenue that USA is going to lose out on because Netflix is uh, Raw's going to Netflix, and that show will be around two and a half, three hours. There's no set time, really. They're going to have flexibility because there's no... There's nothing that, that, that's going to interrupt their broadcast. They could go on forever. I also think it would be interesting if they did, uh, if AEW ran like these overruns, right, that were only max exclusive. That's something to consider also. You know, why would you watch it on max? Well, listen, uh, you get an extra five minutes of something happening. You know, it could be anything. Stuff to think about. But SmackDown potentially going to three hours. Raw is going to stay at three hours, according to Dave Meltzer. But we've also heard that it may fluctuate a little bit. A lot to talk about here. Which we will. When we come back from break, I want to break down SmackDown here. Man, what a segment that was between Cody and Roman. Great stuff at Georgia Tech. Great, great stuff. And also, LA Knight and Andrade had a fantastic match. We're going to talk about this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about SmackDown from Friday night. Bloodline heavy show once again. Actually, if you think about it, let's see. How many segments? First segment, you got Cody and Roman. That's another Bloodline thing. You got Kevin Owens getting jumped, right? Kevin Owens is involved in this. And then you had the main event. I mean, it, the whole show. Two hours of Bloodline. So the show started with the Bloodline entering the building. They're, they're, they're patting them down. They're going through metal detectors, which is so bizarre to see, right? The talent's going through metal detectors and getting patted down. And Jacob Fatu just starts unleashing on the security guards. Beats the crap out of them. They're really... I mean, he is the guy in that group. You know, I... He is overshadowing the rest of those guys. You know what? It, and this is a terrible comparison, okay? I'm not saying there, there's any comparison to this. But when the invasion angle was happening, do you guys remember how over Rob Van Dam got? And he wasn't supposed to. The focus was not necessarily supposed to be on him, right? It was, there were so many other people. But he naturally stood out. And people were very interested to see what happens with him. I, in a weird way, I, and it's not a great comparison, but I feel like that about Jacob Fatu because we could ob obviously see how they were positioning everything with Solo Sokoa. But because Jacob Fatu is such a believable, again, reality, right? Believable character that he looks menacing, this man. He is menacing. And just by that presence and how they've protected him, I mean, that's the guy I want to see. I want to see him in Roman. I want to see him in Cody. Jacob Fatu, I mean, that, that really is the big piece here to that new bloodline. Really good start. I, I enjoyed how they're presenting him. We got LA Knight and Andrade for the U.S. title. 17 minutes. They gave this some time. You know, Andrade's fantastic. So is LA Knight. Uh, over big time with the crowd, LA Knight. This was a fine match, but the ending was a little weird. Did you, MG, what did you make of that ending with the, Andrade went for a handshake, LA and I went for a fist bump, and it was like <laughs> this weird back and forth that happened. And so like, after the match, right? You're after the match, and LA and I, yeah. you know, Andrade forcefully shook his hand and raised his hand, and then he went to the back. It, it was awkward. I, I don't know if they meant to do it like that, but yeah, it, it's clearly leading to something else. And oh, I hope Carmelo so. Hayes is involved in this too. Yeah. So, because those three are having some just banger. They're basically carrying the workload on SmackDown right now, as far as the work yeah. rate goes, because they are fantastic. Yeah. They're really, really good. Um, also, they announced that Andrade and Carmelo are going to have another match, their sixth match yes. next week on SmackDown. So it looks like we're doing a best. Looks like we're doing an unofficial best of seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good stuff. 
So after this, we got a mini movie with <laughs> Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes at Georgia Tech. They told a fantastic story here. They shot it so well. You know, this is what WWE is at this point, right? When you compare, like, there's wrestling, and then there's this. You may like this. You may not like it. You may say it's overproduced. It, it takes away from it, depending on how you view wrestling. But you, this is a relatively a new concept over the last couple of years that really emerged from the pandemic of doing these cinematic yep. things. I'm glad you said that. Mm. You know, th this all derived from the net, the necessity to do something when you couldn't have a live audience. And you were doing these pre, you know, pre-recorded, really well shot shows. And this just continuing. And they've gotten even better with the new production in that company. Um, you know, I, I, this is appealing to a whole new generation of wrestling fan. Okay. I, I, I say this all the time. I'm 40 years old. The wrestling that I consumed from childhood is so different from wrestling today. Would I have loved this if I was a kid? Yeah, probably. You know, a face-to-face -face confrontation between a world champion and a, and a major, major challenger, right? This is Cody and Roman. These are the two biggest guys to have held that title in the last three years. Right? And we're getting this beautifully shot, you know, well-produced film-level footage. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's exactly what they're going for. You know what the equivalent was when I was a kid? Wow. Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan having a face-to-face -face the, on the funeral parlor. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, and again, very. It, it is an interesting comparison, you know? And that was so memorable for me because it was not in the ring. It was shot differently. There was smoke. I, I'm curious if, if this resonates the same to a younger fan of the importance of this moment. You have the two best guys being in this highly produced thing. I, I'm, I'm, I think it, it, it does connect with them. I think this is appealing to a whole new generation. When people say, I hate this stuff, you know what? We've aged out with this stuff. This is the direction this company is going, and I'm willing to bet that more you're going to see matches presented like this with a higher production value. That's where they're headed. You know, when Vince said we make movies, he's, this is this is the end goal for this company, whether you like it or not. Do you know what it just reminded me of? What? Um, this this was shot in a way that just brought back memories of the Boneyard match during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. It had shot really hard. lighting. Yeah. The, 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 the music in the background and stuff. So, yeah, it did remind me a little bit of that. Just we also got taste. after this, we got Apollo Crews defeating Giovanni Vinci. In a minute 35, Kevin Owens came out to address Cody working with Roman. He got jumped. DIY came to, to the rescue. Chelsea Green then cut a, a dumpster promo. <laughs> <laughs> this was shot, you know, this was shot, you know, differently too. Chelsea Green cuts a promo in a dumpster. She's training for a dumpster match against Mitchin in two weeks. Naomi and Bailey defeated Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton in 11 minutes. They did a double pin finish, so they're both going for this title. Uh, I did not like the the promo they did prior to the match. I it, it was it's very um uh wooden is yeah. how I would describe. I don't like sometimes how they script Tiffany Stratton. She's very yeah very uh one word at a time, and it, there's yeah it's no emotion. It's but she's kinda, she's fantastic. She's she gotten be, so good. I mean you know it's she's gonna really take more good. Time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> We got the Street Profits and Kevin Owens against the Bloodline. It went to an apparent no contest. It went 15 minutes almost. Cody came for the save at the end. They left you with a visual of Owens looking like he wanted to hit Cody with the chair because he was still upset that Cody is tagging with Roman. I don't... I, I, this, this whole thing is weird to me. I, I don't know why... I mean, I, I, I get it. I get it that he's, you know, why would you team with this guy? But is that upset over it? So this think, is leading to I, something. Yeah, and, and here's where I think we're going to disagree a little bit. Yeah. I think this is ultimately leading to the Bloodline versus an all-star uh, team at uh, 
war games, games and yeah, not what and we I, wanted. And that is not, not what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, yeah. It, it's that, see, that takes away from it for me. Totally. It should have been Bloodline versus Bloodline. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that well, should have been the match. And you know what? And if you're saying, well, they're, they're down a guy, guess who they could have added? Sami Zayn. Maybe we're getting Maybe that. we I are. Know. You know what? Mm -hmm. Maybe we are. Maybe he, maybe Kevin Owens goes to that side. And, and because Sammy comes and he makes up with Roman. You know, I, I don't know, but the Usos should be involved in this. And they're not. Yeah, and Jay right? is completely in a different program on a different brand. Uh, yep. Going for the, uh, the IC title. So he's busy. He's busy <laughs> so there. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, I... You know, listen, sometimes when you fantasy book, you, you'll be left disappointed. And that's one of those moments right here. Uh, I really would like this to be a bloodline versus bloodline match. Cody, uh, Cody does not need to be interrupting this program. He could be doing something else for the time being. But maybe that's also a way to prevent, you know, one from beating the other and making it making the story end. You know, that's also it. Yeah. If you do that match now, then it's over. You're going to have to pivot to something else. So. Maybe they're well, waiting that, to do that. In that promo, you know, they they set up a lot of things in that big uh, the the Georgia Tech promo. Yeah, they definitely set up uh, Roman Roman versus Cody three at some point down the road. You have that, um, you know, and you you already mentioned uh, all the Jacob Fatu and all the the matches they can have with him. Yeah, and you know, solo. Yeah, I mean that lot. is that is the you match, know? right? Roman versus Jacob Fatu is the match. That's what Can people really want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Can we talk about uh, a certain um, Gorilla Destiny member that may not be the greatest? Mm -hmm. uh, Tangalo is struggling uh, a little yeah. bit in that match. Uh, I heard he was I, injured. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't like criticizing talent, especially talent that is on the level of being on TV weekly, right? But there's something going on there, I, and I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just not translating well. Maybe he is injured. You know, I, I want him to perform great. I want Tama Tonga to do great. Uh, He's pretty good still. Tom, Tom is fantastic. Mm. You know, we'll see. Uh, not everybody's going to put on a five-star match. You know, it's just how it is. I, I, I hope that they do something good, good with these guys. I want them to all prosper in this program. It's good for wrestling. I don't want anybody to struggle. But I'm curious to see where this goes, you know, and, and if they add anybody else to the bloodline and how they bring this in. This is a this is an interesting story, and it's been going on for years. It's one of the longest running storylines for this company. When we come back, AEW, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Last night was AEW Collision. You know, it's funny. I, I did not get a chance to watch this live, and I was not on social media, so I did not have any kind of... Um, preconditioned thoughts going into the show, okay? I watched it this morning with my son. And again, I always say it, it's, it's always great to see a different perspective and watching it with someone that likes something different. You know, my son is eight years old. His idea of wrestling is so different than mine, and it should be. He had a blast watching this show, okay? Started with a bunkhouse brawl, Ring of Honor tag champions, Dustin and Sammy defeated the Undisputed Kingdom. This was a fun match. Everybody was bleeding. It was a total dumpster fire. I like this match. I thought, and it's amazing how Dustin is still performing at that level, you know, all these years. And he's not really struggling. And this is a guy that, you know, his body's beat up. It's great to see him on TV having these matches. This was a this was a very good match. Did you like this match, MJ? Uh oh yeah, this was awesome, and and it did remind me of those old school bunkhouse yeah. matches. Um, well, this whole day. show, this did. whole show was that it was that you know, and you know, here's the problem. I this is a fun show for me to put on normally on a Saturday night. Have it on. I'm having a couple drinks. I'm chatting with Jess, and it's on, and we're watching. Right? It's fun. Who's the star act on this show? 
Um, you want to know who I think it is? I think it's FTR. FTR, that whole I, group. I know, but you know what? It feels where's like your, you. Where's your, where are your world champions? Right. Where's your, where's your. Well, you got. Uh, all your you champions. You got Mariah May. Yeah, Mariah you May. Mariah May. It, it, you know, against Lady Frost. You know, I, I if this is going to be an A show, they need to re-strategize this split and how they've done this. I, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's a travel thing, but it's, again, it was a really fun show, but it's not a star-studded lineup yeah. for you to say, man, I got to put this on on a Saturday. Maybe that's not the goal anymore. I mean, that's a real big possibility that they, they've repositioned because they realize, like, we can't, we need to put everybody on Dynamite because that's the flagship. I've, I don't know. I've, uh, I've compared this with you before, but it does remind me a lot of WCW Saturday Night. Where you got those, you got a lot of the mid carters carrying the show. Yeah, but here's the and problem: the main, WCW Saturday Night was not trying to go into buildings and sell six thousand tickets or five thousand tickets. You know, this show is doing about I don't know two thousand people. Mm -hmm. You got to do more than that. They did a hype video for Britt Baker's return to the ring at Dynamite five year anniversary, October second. So that answers the question of where's Britt Baker. Mark Briscoe, Kyle O'Reilly, and Hologram with Rocky Romero defeated the premier athletes. You know what? Fine match. It showed off Hologram. That was the purpose. It was a fun match. But it means nothing. You had a non-title match. Mariah May defeating Lady Frost. Again, another good match. This is a... F For me, I love this. Because it's a wrestling show. But those little things to build... You to come back every week are not there with this, and I love and I love wrestling. Deanna Parazzo and Taya Valkyrie were interrupted by Willow. This was a backstage they segment that they got. Willow. They they I'm no, sorry they interrupt. interrupt yeah they interrupted <laughs> Willow. I read that backwards. They interrupted Willow. Uh, this was fun. There was a there was a little uh, conversation about I'm from New York. For uh, Willow. So they're leading into that for next week. This felt like a, um, this the way they, they, they're presenting this Ty of Elkery, Deanna Perrazzo uh, group. Yeah. It felt like a mob. <laughs> that they're, goes, they're offering protection. She goes, we will offer you protection. <laughs> I just said. <laughs> May your first child be a masculine child. Darby <laughs> Allen defeated Evil Una with Alex Reynolds. So there, there's your star. You know, Darby's a big star. Okay, that's one. This is what I'm into. Jeff Jarrett challenged Hangman Page to a strap match at Grand Slam. I'm there. I'm at Grand Slam next week. Someone this is the match I want. Resuscitate you oh, man. I wanna, I'm going to bring my guitar with me. <laughs> this is a fantastic match for that show. Serena Deeb defeated Queen Aminata. Sammy Guevara challenged Okada for, for Grand Slam in an Eliminator match. And if he wins, he's going to challenge... For the title, October second. Okay, Listen, I think he wins. I want to say. I think you he's think, gonna oh, win. Oh, you think he'll be? Yeah, but Okada has not lost. Yeah, but I think it'll be. It'll be. It'll be a. This will be one of the rare funky decisions. I think. Like a, like a DQ or something. Yeah, which right, we'll I don't see. encourage him to do that kind of stuff often. But if yeah. it sets up a good story going forward, to where these guys can have a good thirty minute match, because I think Sammy can deliver. With uh, Okada. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. He's he's super mm -hmm. talented. Main event. Okay, we got a Nigel promo at the end, but the main event. This was an all-star 10-man tag team match. The Grizzled Young Vets, Roderick Strong, Roosh, and the Beast Mortos against FTR, Hook, and the Outrunners. Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. Um, this went long. I loved everything <laughs> about it. This was such a fun five-on-five -five match, which... You know, I before you used to see these happen, and then they went away for a little bit. But this was so much fun, and it did a great job at telling the story. Uh, Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd are freaking over. The Outrunners are fantastic. What a great gimmick. Love it. FTR was loving it, too. They're doing all the poses with them. They're coming out with the glasses. But the story here was displaying... Mordos and Roosh. Roosh looked really good. He got the pin. 
He's trying to prove himself to Don Callis. Uh, they, they, they did a, again, what a fantastic wrestling show. A lot of fun. Quick two hours. Nigel then comes out. Cuts a very long promo on Brian Danielson. Starts at the ramp. <laughs> Tony Schiavone interrupts him. Tells him he's full of doo-doo with what he's saying about Danielson. Then he makes his way to the ring, Nigel. And he continues the promo in the ring. I felt like it kept going. It just kept it, it just, going. It, it went on a little bit too I, long. Well, I was, you know what it I was? I was waiting for Danielson's music is what I was waiting for. I think that's what a lot of people were waiting for. But what, mm-hmm. what, what kind of hurt it was that all-star 10-man match was very long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have the time stamp here, but, it, it, but not long in like a bad way. It just It was long. It was a long match. So you went from that. That's the main event to Nigel speaking, and that went on for a little too long. You know, it was two long mm-hmm. segments back to back. Um, I'm looking forward to this Nigel match. I really am, because what? where is it going to lead to? Well, I have a theory you're not going to like it. Oh, uh, what is it? I, I think that Danielson's more injured than he's leading on, and they moved up the timeline of this match to get it out of the way. And so when he drops, he's going to be gone. Mm. Yeah, but so I on. believe he's... I, I believe him and... I believe he has a match at that pay-per-view. Oh, uh, most certainly. But at the pay-per-view, I think, is where he drops. You know I think saying? he drops that's it at the pay-per-view, moved. yeah. That, I, I mean, listen, uh, my gut is it. telling me mm-hmm. it's going to be it's gonna be Mox that beats him. It's, it's looking that way. I don't know. We'll see what happens with the Derby match yeah. on, uh, this week. Which this week is what we have lined week. up for Collision, AW Collision. I'll be there. I'll be at Collision. If you see me there, please say hello. I love talking to you guys. I love meeting you guys. Dynamite and Collision, you mean? Well, I'm only staying for Dynamite. I'm not staying for Collision. Dynamite and Collision. <laughs> Grand Slam, Dynamite and Collision next week. Here are the matches. AW Grand Slam Collision. We got MXM Collection. That they're going to reveal what they did to Max Caster's jacket. Soraya Jamie Hayter in a Soraya Rules match. Did you hear the rules? No. Um, what were they, they? So essentially, Soraya can do everything, and uh, Jamie Hader can has to follow all the rules. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> it was pretty bizarre. We also have Chris Jericho, Big Bill, and Brian Keith against Orange Cassidy, Kyle O'Reilly, and Mark Briscoe. Dynamite will have the AW Continental Title Eliminator match: Okada and Sammy Guevara. You have a lumberjack strap match. Hangman Page versus Jeff Jarrett. FTW champion Hook defends against Roderick Strong. AW Trios champion Claudio Pack and Wheeler Yuta defend against. Did we find out who they're defending against? Um, I don't know. I should okay. know this, and I don't. Okay. <laughs> well, while I'm re- while I'm reading down the card, oh, maybe you can. Uh, find- it's yeah. I'll look it up. I think yeah. I know who it is. Okay. AW Women's World Champion Mariah May defends against Yuka Sakasaki. I hope I said that right. Yeah, I did. Good for me. Pat on the back. Barry Horowitzing myself right now. Look at that. I was really good with the the last names, and then all of a sudden something happened, and now blah, 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 blah. that's what comes out every time. It, it's it's a couple letters next to each other that I don't recognize. AW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, defend against Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher. It's going to be a fantastic match. John Moxley, Darby Allen for an AW World title shot. And AW World Champion Brian Danielson against Nigel McGuinness in a non-title match if Danielson can compete. Did you find out who they're facing? I did not. Well. And I, I thought I knew this, but for whatever reason, obviously I apologize. Not. No. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to uh, pull up what the ticket sales for this show are. Russell Tix does a fantastic job at breaking these down. This is as of yesterday. As of yesterday. And, and listen, Arthur Ashe Stadium is a huge stadium, right? The first year they did nearly 20,000 people. I was, I've been at every single one. And that attendance is dwindling every year. There's no denying that. Currently, they have 5,522 tickets distributed. This is as of two days ago, and they're selling about 200 tickets a day on average here the last couple of days. I mean, you're going to get a big jump at the end. I, I'm, I'm not 
you know, I think you'll have 6,000 people at least in that building, but it was 11,263 last year. So you're nearly halving that. Maybe they'll have more. Maybe they'll have 7,000 people in that building. You know, the current setup is for 6922. Uh, so when it's all said and done, maybe they'll get 8,000 people, and that'll be a nice crowd for them. You know, to be honest, 7,000 people is a, is a fantastic crowd for AEW. Who is it before we go to break? So so I'm pretty sure it's Private Party, and I think You're pretty sure. he's Commander. Well, remember they did that angle uh, okay. on Dynamite where they beat the hell out of them. I think okay. it's going to be them. All right. Mm. So 7,000 people in that building? I think that'll be impressive. It'll be good. You know, I I, I aired my, my issues about this on Matt Men and on Beyond the Bell this week on how, you know, they have to change something. The expectation of them doing 11,000, 10,000 people for every show is it. That's a, that's a very difficult expectation. You know, we did not get that for 20 something years. Uh, you know, now they're not as hot anymore and the market's kind of leveling out, but to do 5,000 people for these shows, that's a really healthy number. I think that that's a real good number to have 5,000 people for shows, but currently they'll probably do 6,000 to 7,000 here. 6,900 is the, uh, this current setup. When we come back, we got a few more things to touch on. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. MG, anything stand out to you this week in wrestling? I normally ask you this uh, during the show, but I mean the I mean I the bloodline thing was to me was really it was different. It was new. It was something refreshing we haven't seen lately. I liked that. Um, I definitely liked the, on Dynamite the John Moxley uh, new Black Bull Combat Club reboot. Him just destroying people. Absolutely yeah. love that. Um, so uh, and they're definitely doing something different. And I don't know if this is some sort of invasion that we're doing. Uh, I'll be curious to see where that goes. And I know you love a good invasion. I love a good invasion. I love a good invasion. Yeah, I, I am curious where this goes because Moxley is doing a very different character here, which I, I'm enjoying. Uh, he, way more serious. You know, he's always serious, but I, he's presenting himself differently. As you know, they're, and they're... I think this is going to lead to uh, 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 Marina Shafir getting a, a title in, in as well. What would you put on her? You don't really have too many out there. I think there. she's going to be. I think eventually. Well. I don't know. I, yeah, it's a good question. Maybe, maybe she beats Mercedes. Hey, maybe, know. maybe, maybe Ring of Honor title. She beats Athena. Maybe that's how you do it. Something like yeah, you could do yeah, that. Yeah, that would be good. I, I like this. I like Marina's presentation. I like what they're doing. I, I'm curious to see if they add anybody. You know, there's also She's news a modern about her. China. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I like that. I like the the strong female muscle. You know, it's a, it's a great gimmick. But we'll see what happens next week. Arthur Ashe Stadium. I'll be there, guys. And if you're there, let me know. Hit me up. I'll probably get to the venue early a little bit. Have a couple drinks at City Field and then head over. That's what we'll do. Guys, this was a blast. We'll see you next week on Wrestling Observer Live. Take care.